Thank you so much for watching and listening. We're continuing our series, Journeys with Jesus. And before we hop into that, here's a great joke for you. And remember, don't forget to subscribe. I want you to subscribe because phew, there's really encouraging content, fun interviews, and fantastic jokes, kind of. So here's your joke. What do you call a pig that knows karate? A pork chop. <laughs> I know. You're like, woof, thank God we got the joke over with. We can get onto something meaningful and helpful. Okay, so we're doing this series called Journeys with Jesus. Um, I, of course, I want you to like this because it's really, really good content. Share it with your friends. But in our journey, we talked last week about walking with Jesus and how Jesus walked um, all over the place when he was here. But today I want to talk about um, sailing or swimming with Jesus. You're like, what? Well, Jesus sailed. And there was one person who actually was swimming, sort of, actually more like drowning. But I say that tongue in cheek because Jesus traveled across the Sea of Galilee several times. Um, and conveniently, uh, many of his disciples were fishermen who were very familiar with the Sea of Galilee. But I think it's interesting, sailing with Jesus is another way of journeying with Jesus. The most common way Jesus journeyed when he lived on the planet was he walked, but he also sailed. And he had his disciples with him who sailed as well. So what do we think about like this whole idea of sailing with Jesus? It seems a little bit unusual because I doubt many of us have had much sailing experience. We might have been in a motorboat or some kind of fishing boat or whatever, but sailing, you know, that's like you put the little sail up and you depend on the wind um, to kind of move you back and forth wherever you're going. Um, sailing too can be also, it can be very relaxing <laughs> and it can be very scary at, at the same time. So for example, there's a couple of occasions where Jesus uh, in Luke 8, 20, to 25, it says Jesus was asleep in the boat as they were sailing across the Sea of Galilee. Came a big storm and it freaked out all the disciples. Well, you got to appreciate that many of these disciples were very familiar with the Sea of Galilee. So for them to freak out with a big storm, like that's a thing. And they were concerned that they were going to get overwhelmed by the waves and stuff. So they wake up Jesus. Jesus is sleeping. He's sleeping through the storm. And I think it's interesting to consider that a lot of times when Jesus did the whole Sea of Galilee sail thing, I think it, for him, it was a time to kind of pause and relax and not have people crowding and pushing on him and demanding from him and wanting, expecting from him, be that miracle food or healing or, or a conflict with, you know, religious leaders. I think going sailing across the Sea of Galilee was kind of a pause until it wasn't with the storm. And I think sometimes we go through life like that. We think, well, you know, we're in a, a season where it's kind of a lull and we get to kind of catch our breath and exhale. And then something unexpected happens and kind of cuts your legs out. You're like, Ugh! but then you can appreciate that Jesus is present with you in the soothing, still calm times. And Jesus is with you as well in the stormy times. He's in the boat. When we go journeys with Jesus and Jesus is, we include Jesus in our life journey, then no matter what, we're sa sailing smooth or stormy sailing, okay, Jesus is totally present. And then I want to point this out to you as well. There is a point in time where Jesus, and we read about this in Matthew 14, Jesus is walking on the water in the middle of the night, um, walking across the Sea of Galilee, and you have all the disciples in a boat, and they see Jesus walking on the water, and they literally, in the Greek, it's the word phantasm, like a ghost. And Peter says to Jesus, Lord, if it's you, bid me come. And Jesus says, come on. The only dude that gets out. And he gets out of the boat and begins to walk on the water towards Jesus. I think that's really powerful to think about journeys with Jesus. And there are times when your journey with Jesus will be in the night during a storm, because that's exactly what happened. There was a big, it was a storm and the winds and the waves and the water got Peter distracted and he took his eyes off of Jesus and began to sink. And then he calls out, Lord, help me. Jesus reaches out, grabs his hand and says, hey, quit doubting. <laughs> I like that. But I just think, you know, kudos, props to Peter <laughs> for getting out of the boat in the first place. 
But when we do journeys with Jesus, it'll include sailing, it'll include some miraculous water walking, and we might from time to time get distracted <laughs> with demands and stuff from life, regular, but it's okay, because we can recalibrate, come back, Focus in on Jesus because we're doing our life journey with Jesus. Walking on the water, sailing in a boat, no matter what's happening, we are walking and doing life with Jesus. So thank you for subscribing. Hit the notification bell right there. Keep you posted when we put up new content. And here's your question I want you to answer now. What helps you focus on Jesus? This is a really important question because that's the question that Peter had to say, help Lord, because of his focus. He got distracted. So what helps you? What helps you focus on Jesus? Write that in the comments and we'll come back to you next week with a new episode. 